Good morning. Hope you're having a fantastic day. If you're new to the channel, I'm Steve Chapman of Fishing Florida Radio, and today is Media Day here in Knoxville, Tennessee for the 2019 Bassmaster Classic. What is Media Day? Media Day is when we get to have a little time with all of the anglers at the Classic that have been invited to the Classic or fishing the Classic. We have lunch with them. We then break off and while they're on their boats or wherever, we get time to sit down and talk to them, ask them questions, see how they're doing, all that stuff. So today we are going to be doing that and hopefully having fun. We'll have some, some interviews and all sorts of stuff. After that, we're going to get a preview of the Classic Expo. We're going to go in and uh, kind of check out things over at the Academy booth around 3.30ish. So I'm going to take you with me today. You're going to see some interviews from all sorts of people, all sorts of anglers, and then maybe a little shout or preview of what the expo is going to be like here in Tennessee, in Knoxville, Tennessee. So I invite you to join me. Hopefully it's decent. I'm going to try to get some good interviews or ask some, some good questions to the anglers and then just enjoy myself. It's a work day, technically. So you got to do what you got to do. Jordan Lee, back-to-back -back classic champions. How are you, sir? Doing great, man. Doing great. Any pressure on any pressure on you this week? Not really any pressure. No. Um, I like this. I like this. Uh, this. This stance. Hold on. Let me get back to this. this, right this is, that's a good way to roll. That's how we roll right here. Uh, <laughs> don't have a whole lot of pressure this week. Just gonna go out, and have fun, enjoy it. You know. I'm. I'm not. I hadn't had a, a great, great practice or anything like that. But you know, I'm excited to, to just get the tournament started. You know, practice is long. You know, it, we, we, we have all this time to prepare. I'm just ready to go fishing and just see what I can catch, you know, see what I can figure out during the tournament. And that's that's why I do my best. So Just have fun. That's what you got to do. Have fun. I mean, you know, you're always having fun when you're catching fish. But uh, regardless, just, just, just have fun and, and enjoy, this, uh, enjoy this classic. Made a big switch this year. Went to Berkeley. What were some of the thoughts behind that? Went to Berkeley Abu. Um, actually got. Actually got some of the new ones. Oh yeah. Are we allowed? Am I? Yeah, you're allowed to show this. Um, Are you sure? Yeah. This is uh, this is coming out. Oh, classic. this is yours? This is mine. This is coming out at the. Uh, oh, look at this. This classic. Uh, this is the first time it's really been seen. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be sh here at the Bassmaster Classic, uh, Berkeley, and, and I came out with three different baits um, with HD colors so they're gonna be you know the, the colors on these are gonna be printed on there so they're gonna look super realistic um, these are more drop shot minnows oh right yeah here, but they're gonna be printed on there so the, the, the colors gonna be truly um, lifelike and uh, oh this is yours I didn't want to steal it that's fine you can steal it but something I'm excited about with, with Berkeley and Abu I've um, got a combo coming out that uh you know, I'm looking forward to, to showing off. Um, it's gonna Look be a 99. Yeah, it's gonna be a 99 dollar combo. So uh, yeah, we got some cool stuff coming out, and you know, there's great great companies to work with. You won the first uh, Bass Pro Tour event. How insanely great was that? Man, it, it was amazing. It was like it was one of the one of the cooler wins that I've had as far as the, the first one. That was the first MLF. Bass Pro Tour yeah. tournament, um, and and the, the format of it just really, I feel like fits my style as far as how it works and uh, you know just catching fish. And that day was just magical. It was like literally one of the best days I've ever had as far as a tournament day goes. I mean, you love Lake Garcia now. It's one of my favorites for sure. I mean, it was just fun. Like I can't remember that having that much fun in a, in a tournament. So, what's it going to take this this week to win? What what's the lures you're going to use? You're going to use some of your new stuff, or is it something else you're going to? I'm, I'm going to stick to uh, three, you know, three main baits: uh, a crankbait, square bill. Um, I got one from Berkeley Square Bull. It's a, a, a reddish color. A lot of those are going to be thrown this week. Um, a spinnerbait and jig. You know, that's what I feel like. One of those three baits will win the tournament or have a big player in it. It's really about throwing. You know, where the fish are at. You know, 
big no, system right here to fish. A lot of water to choose from. Two out of four so, have you thought if you don't yeah. win this week that really that you might have to work the expo next year at the classic? Has that a, uh, even well, went into your head? Not really. You know, I, I don't. I don't think. Not about that that's it. a bad thing. No, it's not a bad thing. But uh, you know, I, I, I'm just really focused on the, the next few days. And, you know, trying to do the best I can. The repeat champion would be absolutely stupid. It'd be stupid. It would yeah. be. You know that. You think yeah. you, you didn't? You didn't reply to my first text. I'm gonna have 700 texts if you win it on think, Sunday. Yeah, I, I think I'll probably get kicked <laughs> out if I, if I win three in a row. So but we're gonna try. Very good. Thank you very much for the time. Good luck this week. Sounds good. Jordan Lee, guys. Thank you, dude. Angular of the year, Justin Lucas. How are you, dude? I'm good. I'm good. You ready for this week? I am. You know, I don't. I don't have high expectations, and that, I think that could be a really good thing. Uh, this place is changing daily, so what guys learned this weekend isn't going to be the same on Friday, and what guys learned yesterday on Wednesday in our official practice day uh, is not going to be the same tomorrow either. So this is a tournament about adjustments, and whoever can make the right ones is going to be the guy that prevails at the end of the week. How uh, special is this classic for you after last year? Uh, I, I don't think that makes it as special as um, you know. This is this we you know we know that for the foreseeable future, this is the one where every the big guys, everybody's here. Yeah. And the mixture of everyone's here, just like last year. You know that's why winning AOI last year was so important to me uh, because I beat Van Dam and I beat all the guys you know that I had looked up to for so long. So this event's the same way. This is this is the big one. Uh, with everyone here and that's not to say a classic won't be important in the future because it certainly will be but this is the one as a competitor that you really want to win yes uh, because you know you you did it against the very best guys yes so. heaven forbid you don't win i mean we're hoping you win <laughs> i love it what happens next year at the classic do you have to work the classic <laughs> do you stay home what what do you do i don't really know but we'll find out <laughs> It's we'll too find, early to we tell. Will find out. Uh, How important is it to, to have a classic uh, on your resume of all the things that you've done? Well, it's it's and the, the whole that trophy. piece of the puzzle yeah. in my career right now with with a couple of Elite Series wins and an AOI win. Really, I got the hardest one out of the way. The the classic has always been said it's the easiest tournament to win. It's only three days and there's only 52 guys here. Um, but. But can you really say that? This is the best 52 I, anglers in I the think, world. Yeah, I think it's probably, if you really think about it, it probably is the easiest tournament to win. Uh, but I think if you're in a spot where you're feeling the pressure, it, it changes things and makes it different. Do you feel the pre Do you feel any pressure Not this year? Yet. If I'm leading after day two, I'll feel I'll be feeling some pressure. That's my hand on your wallet. That's the pressure <laughs> you're feeling. <laughs> you know, he stole my seat at lunch. I did? He did. Oh. Brad did. So, Rude. Rude. Horrible. Horrible. Okay, I have a question about Florida fishing. Yeah. Can I ask you about that? Sure. One of the problems I think to deal with Flor uh -oh. Fat Cat Newton. Hot kick. Uh, <laughs> he's Bobby! On, he's on my boat now. You're giving everybody those stickers. That's the problem. Oh, though. He does deal. I've only had 10 of them made, and I still have six of them. <laughs> <laughs> True story. You, Ayler, Swindle, and Jordan. And Jordan. Brandon, want to take one? He doesn't know you. I'm, I'm debating on Brandon now. Me and him have a love hate relationship. <laughs> Come on. I'm going to hook you up. Let's, let's just give me time. All right. All right. Everybody loves Brandon. You got to have a sticker so on Brandon. The first time I met him, real quick, are we recording? Yeah, we're recording. We do that. But... <laughs> the GoPro. The GoPro booth, right? It's like three or four years ago. Classic. When GoPro had a big booth and uh, Swindle was in there. Talk to Swindle or whatever, and I uh, went to take a picture. And I pulled out my phone because my GoPro had died. Okay. So I pulled out a phone. The first time I met Brandon, and I pulled out a phone to take a picture. He's like, Oh, you can pull out a Samsung and a GoPro booth? And I, I was like, My GoPro's dead, Bobby. I said, Give me a high five. Like that. <laughs> there was a huge crowd. Everybody started laughing. He just looked at me like I just kicked this puppy. Yeah. <laughs> Should go do it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry to interrupt, guys. Yeah, you're never so interrupted. Rude. Okay, Florida fishing. So rude. When you're down in Florida, is there a certain thing you look for in like lily pads or mats to find those giant fish? Oh, 
I know it's not that this is not the right question at this time, but yeah. I'm going to do a segment just, just on ask that. Bobby or Chris Lane, that question. That's what I would do. I would I'd call lunch him up Bobby. and practice and ask him. <laughs> he, he didn't want to. He, <laughs> he didn't, didn't want to tell me. It. He's like, I don't want to tell Chapman. I don't know, honestly. You know, it's. Uh, I think it's just more trial and error, just fishing that week and seeing what they're in. Are you on them this week? Nah, I wouldn't say that. We'll find out tomorrow. But catching any smallmouth? No. I don't know if I cut any keepers. Close. Close. Yeah, they they don't. An 18 inch smallmouth weighs the same as a 16 and a half inch largemouth. Yeah. The largemouth are really fat right now. They're they're in healthier shape. I think. Is it a is it a crankbait fishery? I think it's gonna be a lot of cranking. Uh, a lot of power fishing. Yep. Maybe a jig. Spinner baits. Spinner bait would be a player this week. Got some bullocks on. Right oh there yeah. That we're gonna tie on. So. Those are nice. Yeah. We'll see. Good luck this week. Thank you. Thank I hope you. to see you up there on the last day. That would yeah. be wonderful. It'd be nice if I'm up there with the trophy. Do you have to give day. Fat Cat a shout out if you're up there on the last day? Not, not gonna happen. Okay, good. Not gonna happen. Just needed to make sure. It, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. The man I've said way too many times, I believe, is the greatest angler on the face of the earth. Jason Christie. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I appreciate I, the kind words. No problem. <laughs> you're very deserving. You do pretty damn well in all the tournaments you join. You're you're a stick, so there's it's a little easy to say that. Uh, how's the, how's practice gone for you? Uh, not great, but uh, practice is overrated if you ask me. <laughs> it's the Allen Iverson thing. Yeah. Practice. What does practice mean? Yeah, it's overrated. I mean, all you want to do is get an idea, and and uh, I had one really good day of practice, one terrible day of practice, and a couple in between, and. And uh, you know things are changing. You know if I if I would wish for one thing to happen the entire week, don't care about practice. I just need to you know catch a a good fish in the morning, get rolling, and learn something, take off with it, and and uh, you know fish to tomorrow. We're gonna have a lot of changes. We've already had a lot of changes since yesterday, the last day of practice. And, uh, it's all gonna be about getting a big bite. And, you know I may not weigh a fish, but you guys know I'm stubborn. I'm gonna go down fishing for big ones. Crazy, crazy off season. Crazy off season. How hard was it to make the decision to move over? Uh, it was hard. I struggled with it. I was one of the last ones to make that decision. Um, you know, I I make a living largely because of the platform that Bass provided for me uh, the last what six or seven years, and and uh, but it's just like a lot of people, you know. I and everybody wants to know my reason. There's a, there's hundreds of reasons. Yeah. That I switch. Too many to even talk about. And, and it's just like, you know, anybody, if they if they work in McDonald's or if they work in a bank, you know, you just have a business decision where where you feel like it's time. Maybe maybe it may not be the better decision, but maybe it's just time, you know, and I needed I personally needed to change. You know, I fished FLW for five or six years. I came over to Bass, I, you know, and things started clicking. Yeah. And it's almost like it got a little stagnant for me and I needed to switch just to kind of recharge my batteries and and uh, I really like it. I mean, I was I was a little worried, you know, when I made the switch. Am I going to like it? Is it going to fit my style? And and uh, you know, the more we've had two events so far, and, and uh, I really, really enjoy both of them. Does it fit your style more than just catching five bass? You think? Uh, I don't know that it's more, but it doesn't change anything. You know, we looked at the weights from the first couple of events, and the same guys would have would have pretty much won. Uh, if they know, caught five or yeah, whatever they I caught. Mean, that, and, you know, all the major league fishing events that I won the selects and stuff, I would have won the best five as well. Yeah. Um, you know, most times when guys win, they're, you know, they're catching a lot of numbers and they're catching big ones too. So, you know, I'm at more, I'm more at ease with that now. And, uh, you know, now I just got to learn because there's a lot more strategy in major league fishing than any other event I've ever fished. And I just have to, you know, kind of figure out that strategy and, and, uh, I'll take it from there. You've had an crazy, amazing career at FLW and over here at Bass, even on in Major League Fishing. Yeah. How weird! I know you. Want, I know personally that you want to win a classic. I do. How how tough would it be to not have that on your your resume for you know for the near future? Right. Um, it's tough. You know, you you look at guys and and uh, you know the guys that people remember are the guys that you know win angler of the years they win classics and and uh you know obviously i want to be that guy but you know i figure in my lifetime if i fish 10 to 15 you know i'm going to be lucky and 
the odds just aren't in your favor to win a class. I mean, there's 52 no. guys here, and there's going to be one guy that wins and 51 losers. So, and I've been so close so many times, and and honestly. I've had my chances. I mean, uh, you know, if I don't ever fish another classic after this, I can look at the classics that I've fished, and, and I've had my chances to win, and, and I'll be fine with it. Do you look back at that after those two years, mm -hmm. those crazy two years, do you go back and, and think about what you could have done or what you should have done different, or you just go, you want to know, I gave it all for those three days uh, and fished my ass off. And, and just go, I just was really unlucky. Yeah. I mean, I, you I, really I, were. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've replayed it, you know, more so, like I said, in a deer stand or driving like that, I've thought about it. You know, and last year at the Classic at Hartwell, you know, I lose a six pounder the second day. I get beat by a pound 10 ounce. I lose a six pounder the second day that would have killed a three pounder. That I catch that fish 99 times out of 100. Uh -huh. I start off the, the fourth day losing a three and a half pounder, but the fish that gets me is, is the fish that I, you know, I flipped the jig over to a dock and and I knew the fish had it and I thought he had squatted on I thought he was sitting still and, and he was actually swimming toward me and, and literally I, I know that if I would have cranked my reel one time and took up 32 inches of line I would have caught that fish but I didn't you know and when I set the hook I didn't hit her until I got back and never even got a hook in her and, and uh, whenever it's something like that it's just you know, it just to me, it just was not meant to be, and yeah. And I just hope that one day, you know, that I can win one of those events like that, to where I can, I can let every, all this other stuff rest. Does it bother you? It doesn't bother you. Does it? I feel like in every tournament you're in, mm -hmm. you are one of the favorites. Even here this weekend again. I don't think there's any way to to not put you in the top five of any tournament that you join. Right. Does that put any added pressure on you when you're out there? Uh, it does a little bit. It makes me feel better. I mean, it feels like that the you know the fans and the industry you know that I've gained their respect and you know you want you kind of want to be the favorite. I mean, you want to you want people to be uh, you know these guys that that's their first classic. You know, you want them to look over here and be like, damn, there's Jason Christie and yeah. Dan Dam and guys like that and. And, uh, but it's really pressure. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I've had classics where, uh, you know, it did, you know I, th I remember one that, you know, it didn't go so hot. And it, I've worked one Sunday in a classic. And, and uh, I'll tell you what, as much as I like to hang out with the fans, it really sucks. And the biggest thing is, you know, I just want to be out there. I want to be fishing on Sunday, and I want to be within five or six pounds of the winner. Just because those days that you have a chance to win, uh, you know, you look at some of these days, you know, Jordan's second, or Jordan's last day on Conroe where he caught the big bag. I mean, he's going to remember that forever, and that's what I want. I want, I want to sit down at some point and catch... You know, I want to be down by five pounds going in the last day and catch a 25 pound bag and surprise everybody. But uh, you have that opportunity. I have that opportunity. If I'm within five pounds, then watch out. I have that opportunity. Jason Christie, in my opinion, the best angler in the world. I we have I have you in my top I have in my top three this week in fantasy. I don't think I don't think you can do you can do worse. I, Great angler. Thank you for the time, man. Thank you. Classic champ, Edwin Evers. How are you? Great, great, great. Before I start this, even though we're filming, what's going on with the pecans? Are we getting them this week at the Classic? We didn't We didn't get a boot this year. It was uh, kind of a long story, but uh, the opportunity wasn't there, so we just we weren't able to get one. You've won a Classic. Some of these guys haven't. They've got a little more stress on them. How is that going to, you know, everyone wants to have that, that classic champion championship on your resume uh this year is a, the last chance for a lot of guys do you think it puts more pressure on them than you uh you know i i don't know you know i, I i'm really happy to be here it's, it's exciting to be here but i'm super excited about our future you know so i just yeah i'm glad to be here but i can't wait to to go the new direction that we're going because it's just it's a it's kind of refreshing you just had a win too didn't you like yeah. Two weeks ago, yeah, yeah. I almost texted you and said, "Hey, can we get you on the show?" And then I thought, "You want to know it? You probably need to, to, to take a chill oh, pill." I see how you are. I wasn't good enough to be on your show. Well, no, 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 it wasn't that. I, I did. I really thought. I thought, you know what? It's been. Well, it's, it's been a crazy I, off season. I was sitting there with my phone the whole time. I did. I did, I did call, text you saying congratulations. You did. Didn't you I? Did, you did. You did. 
it's been a crazy off season now. Yeah, it's been really busy. It's uh, a lot of things going on, and uh, uh, you know, you know, here at this event, it's going to be unbelievable because we've never had a classic here before. It's on the Tennessee River, the all-time greatest river in the United States for bass fishing. It's on the headwaters of it. Um, a neat town. Everything's really close together. It's gonna, it's gonna flow well. I just, it's gonna be a phenomenal classic. Water conditions are all over the place. I love it. It's five foot low on one end, super high on the other, and. Uh, Tons of water going through. Things are changing daily. We've got a big rainstorm coming in tonight. So it's going to be a fun classic to follow for your fans. Have you been uh, on them? I mean, how, how was practice for you? I had a good practice. Good. Yeah. I like to hear that. <laughs> Look at the, you have like this smile of confidence. You, you must be doing something that we don't know about here. Oh, no. <laughs> I just, I'm, I'm excited to go fishing. Yeah, it's, it's time. How hard was it just, I know we're, we're here at the Classic, but how tough was it to make the decision go to, 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 to go to Major League Fishing? You know, very thankful for the past. Yes. For me, it was uh, when somebody presents you an opportunity for better working conditions, better everything, mm -hmm. everything top to bottom, better opportunities, a fan can't ever fault a guy for going somewhere that they better their family. No, they can't. And as bad as it is, you know, that our hearts and souls and, and the, 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 the history of bass, but, you know, there's hardly anybody turned the invitation down. So that tells you how good it is. Yeah. Okay, next year, obviously, you need, there's a good chance you don't. I mean, you win, you're, you fish another classic. I'm going to ask the Ken Duke question. That he said specifically, right here, here he is, Ken Duke. Put him on the spot. Put him on the spot. Right here. Come on. Come on. Let, on the let's spot. ask the question. I love this guy. 2016 Bassmaster Classic <laughs> Champion, one of the best of all times. One Thank of 11 BASs. One of the best tournaments. riders of all time. This guy is let, Let's all ask time. Ken. Let's put Ken on the spot. Can I put Ken on the spot? Oh, please, Edwin. Right. Please. Let's go back to <laughs> 19. I used to like Edwin. I, I remember all the way back when I liked him. This is an easy one because I do know the answer to this one. 2000, who finished second in the Classic? 2000, oh. second in the class, it was Mark Risk. You're right. You can't, you cannot stump the man. He knows every fact there is to know about any so, fishing event ever. We just had him on the show, and his question that he said By was, the way, I picked you as one of the favorites to win the class. We both oh, did. Thank you, thank you. I don't, why, I don't do you, why do you keep saying I that I didn't either? You've said that to two people, I think. I always like to try. <laughs> Here's the question. Do, do you have to work a booth next year? Oh, that was the one to ask. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was going to ask you. I'm asking you beforehand. I said, oh, so you have to... Edwin on the show. I was going to ask him. You're looking forward to working that booth? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. See what happens. It, for a fan perspective, it would be great to see, no offense to any of y'all, to see y'all having to work the booth because they're going to, you know, everyone loves to see y'all. But the, the, you'll be, your arms will be sore because all the autographs you're going to have to sign. But it would be, it's going to be kind of funny next year. I it's, think next year's the next best classic. You no, know, what, what Edwin, what drives Edwin and all these other guys crazy is not being in the booth. They love the interaction with the fans. <laughs> you know, they hate <laughs> this question. So, why aren't you fishing? Yeah, what? I, 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 it'll be 2 o'clock, you know, and, two, and I'm sitting there in the booth in 2009, and it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Man, how'd you do today? Yeah. I'm like, well, I caught so many, I come in early, you know, I said, here's an autograph. You know, it's, it's a, you know, bless their heart, they just expect you to be out, you know, that you made it, you're qualified, so. Uh, I want to see the return of Edwin Evers to Cods. I just asked right. him that. He doesn't have a booth this year. I know, that's a shame. That's right. Yeah, it is. Okay, Edwin Evers, edwinevers.com. Thank you for the time. Thank you, thank you, Steve. The best. Ken Duke, fish and tackle retailer. Here's his camera guy. His and wait a minute, there's the mic. Let, let me just get a picture there's of you with the on. microphone. Look how big it is. This is like Donald Trump's microphone. <laughs> <laughs> this is a real mic flag. I'm really proud of it. I like the FTR on there. Cheers.